Hello, Adonis 5 Gamers. Today we are going to be spectating the pros, but we're specifically only spectating the pros, if you know what I mean. So we're gonna go on the Asia server and we're gonna watch like the peakest of the peak survivors. The reason for this is because I recently got the S1 Ada badge, right? And I recently got champion. And both these two things boosted my confidence. And I was like, wow, maybe I'm actually uh, pretty decent. Maybe I've, I've improved. And then I fought Santi double. Yeah, I asked, I asked Santi 1v1 and see like, oh, I wonder, I wonder how well I can do. I got completely obliterated. <laughs> Like, where's the counterplay to this character, dude? I don't wanna! You win the mind game every time! I don't get it! It's not 50 50, it's 100 0. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, shit! I, w I was gonna say, I don't think that hook is gonna work, but that works because he, because he used the pallet. <laughs> I couldn't figure out how to beat him. Like, I couldn't three cypher kite him ever. I need to learn how to get better. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be going on Asia server. We might not even finish watching the matches unless I really want to, but I'm gonna be watching like the first kites of sur survivors and see what they do. But I'm gonna be watching from the survivor perspective because we always watch things from the hunter perspective, right? Because it's usually easiest to like get a glimpse of a match. But this is more of a selfish video for me, so it's probably not gonna be as entertaining, but it's gonna be more focusing on looking at what the survivors are doing and trying to like make inferences and guess because like. I, my, my confidence is completely crushed and the only way I feel like I can build it back up is by looking at what better players do and we can't really look at that in tournament because we have the hunter perspective but I want to see the survivor perspective from the start of the match and just see how things go from there so we're watching a prospector with 126 stars so this is like really really high ranks on the Aegis server here we got coordinator mercenary Finn this is a pretty solid team gamekeeper going straight for the Finn okay so I want to see what the Finn's doing He's on this cypher and he's not rotating, but the second he gets heartbeat, he goes where? Game here puts a trap, and he's not transitioning for some reason. Okay. The gamekeeper decides to not chase him. Okay, he's gonna be on the prospector sector instead? On the pro- Okay, so where- What's his route? What is his route? Is he gonna vault the window here? No, gamekeeper's gonna opt to set up traps. First thing here, first hook. Not looking behind him, he's gonna get hooked here. What? He couldn't- he, Could he not hook there? Hmm. Wasn't looking behind him. Okay, he's gonna get hit here and cancels attack recovery. 126 stars, by the way. He's actually cooked. Oh, he. Hmm. Okay. Um. That was a pretty short kite, all things considered. Once again, I apologize, everybody. If you want to see the endings of these matches, uh, we're more focused on learning today than we are anything else. So, Anti is likely gonna be taking the first kite here. Uh, she's got flywheel which isn't good against and we got cowboy mercenary lawyer okay what is uh, i just want to see what her route is going to be because santi was cooking me as ann she's trying to hide dang santi would have walked through that uh okay this is an insolence ann as well hmm insolence warp detention probably probably insolence warp detention okay she's gonna drop this pallet tries to dodge the catch fails um and breaks that pallet, which is really smart. So now what do you do? Oh, you're cooked here. You're taking a hit. Yep, you're taking a hit there. Okay, that checks out. Because Anne's broken. Your flute is sealed. Not looking behind you. I guess it's fine. Oh, hello. Just max distance, huh? Uh, well, you dodged the cat. Okay. Oh, she did the trick. She's cooked. She's cooked. Dang. Um... Is, like, nobody going to force out Trey? <laughs> All right, next up, we got Nightwatch. He's uh, 50 stars. Acrobat, Lawyer, Mercenary, Prospector. Pretty meta team here. Uh, looks like Acrobat is going to be the first chase. Let's see. Acrobat knows he spawns near the Hunter. He knows the Hunter spawned there. So your immediate... He just stays here to hide. Interesting. He doesn't rotate immediately. Sees the Nightwatch, starts tiptoeing, is hiding from the start. 
I guess that's fine. Um, Nightwatch opts to use his wind to hop over that. But he has wind right here, so how does Acrobat avoid the hit? He goes to this pallet. Nightwatch is going to mind game it. But Nightwatch sucks, so... Never mind, Nightwatch is broken. Okay. Um, he didn't rotate. Huh. I'm noticing like a lot of people hiding as opposed to rotating. This is a detention, confine. Okay, he's going to opt to just big jump, put down interaction bumps so Nightwatch has to walk around. He's going to go to this window here. He has flywheel. Nightwatch is about to have his warp. Walks through just to set up the confined space. Acrobat can't loop that. He's going to be like, okay, he has confined space, so you reroute. Acro's broke. Oh my gosh. And, and most, most other characters would have died right there. Well, without using, like, a uh, really good ability. Okay. That was good. That was good. I actually would have done the same thing right here. Acrobat's cooked. And that's flywheel. Nice. Nice. Nightwatch tried to bait it out. Oh, but it's Acrobat. Forces out the warp. He should be dead here. He has wind. He doesn't even need it. Nightwatch sucks. Okay. Use your wind. And down you go. Okay. That was a good kite, though. That was a good kite. Forced out trait. And it made Nightwatch use a lot of his abilities there. Plus, he has confined space, so he only has warp. Um, so now, now you know he doesn't have, like, insolence or trump card. Uh, so he got a lot of information from that. And Acrobat only used up three bombs as well. So he does have rebound uh, potential as well. He still has one more red bomb to work with. And uh, let's see. Mercenary. How are we going to do this? He's going to stall out on this pallet here. And how do we... Okay, night, never mind. Nightwatch just hit. He didn't even fake the rescue or anything. Okay. I'm trying to learn like little little rescue practices as well. Oh, he's going for the double down. Okay, that's interesting. But this allows uh, Acrobat to get tons of distance. So... I mean, Nightwatch does have two dashes, so he catches up. And Acrobat is going to opt to... Strong one right here. Hug the wall because Nightwatch sucks. So that's all you have to do. And... Makes him scared of the pallet. Understandable. Nightwatch heavily relies on uh, mind games. Now we have support coming in. Support is not really a factor. I'm more looking at like solo kite and whatnot. But this is going to give a good uh, opportunity for Acrobat to transition now. Does not actually use his final bomb, probably just because the Prospector is here to support. Um, is his full press night watch and Prospector's magnet was kind of pointless. Okay. Ooh! Ooh! Oh, he tried to flywheel. He tried. He tried. He tried. Good, good try, Prospector. Good try. Okay. Well, um, I think they still like at what? Oh, why aren't they rescuing? Oh, the lawyer's gonna... Wait, what? Okay. Uh, Nightwatch is, actually does not get distracted, which is pretty smart. He realized that backdoor rescue is possible. And it is lawyer, so he can't get TS, so you can literally just stall the chair for free until the Nightwatch hits. Uh, they all suck back. The body block does happen. Okay. And Acro's gonna go... Oh my gosh. A second body block? Oh, but he uses up his flywheel to guarantee it. All right. And then that's actually really smart um, because he's going to have to just chair here. And uh, you know Acrobat's going to stay up here because he's scared. Hmm. So he's going to drop down here. And he's going to wait for the Cypher to be primed, basically. Oh. That's a good hiding spot. I'm going to have to take this. Because you break line of sight. You, you crawl right there. You break line of sight there. The second he picks up Prospector, there's a chance to rescue. Now he's going to come back. Okay. He's going to look right here. See, he drops. So you go back to your hiding spot. Or kite? No? Okay. I'm just trying to like like understand what's going through their head. He's going to wait for the cypher to be primed. Okay. That, that's the best case scenario here. Um, actually, I wonder if you can bomb through there. No, you definitely can't. Oh, wait. He's not in a good situation. Oh, he put himself in a bad spot. Pop the cypher. Oh, it was mercenary decoding. So it's the... Oh, wait, prospector though? I guess he had nothing to stun on. Yeah, honestly, I, I agree. All right, that's a draw. We don't need to watch the ending. That's a draw. All right, next up, we got Peak Tier Seer, 44 stars. Toy Merchant, Enchantress, Merc on the team as well. Geisha is going to be the hunter. And it looks like Seer is actually spawning close to the Geisha. So they went for the actual... They actually went for the isolation spawn that they do in tournament, as you can see. Uh, three people here, one person, Big Boat. Toy Merchant, obviously, Big Boat. And he's um, instantly rotating behind Shaq, but she decides to go after the... No, Toy Merchant's over here. What? They didn't spawn Toy Merchant Big Boat? That's crazy. Okay. So she's going to loop this area. Go over here. I want to actually like do camera follows here. He's not looking at the Geisha. 
Gish is trying to red light. She sets up a catapult. I don't. She doesn't make that. Yeah, she doesn't make that catapult. Okay, Gish is gonna break the catapult. I think Gish actually could have got a hit there after the toy merchant doubled back. Uh, gonna go window here. Geisha should be able to dash. No. Nah, because I know if that was me, I was getting hit. Okay, she still got hit. Okay, okay, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. I'm glad she got hit there because that was like, what would have to me? Okay, so she gets the Kaka. I think she can get into small boat here. Never mind, she's gonna go straight distance. She does, it looks like she has cold on her persona web as well because she can see like where the hunter's looking at. Um, okay, so now now the thing is the hunter's gonna try and cut you off here. Yeah, Geisha's trying to cut her off. She, know, she knows she had into this area. Uh... And this is already a great Kai from the Time Merchant, actually. I should I wish I little look, looked at what the Time Merchant did from the very start. And what what her running was trying to do. That was insane. The fact that they both blink predicted was insane. Thank you, thank you. I'm so glad she got TS. I'm so happy. Because the thing is, I try that all the time and I also get TS. It's literally just prey. It's literally just like a prey. Like, that, that, that's literally what it is. It's like you just kind of have to do... I don't know why she was crouching, though. Um, but it's literally just, like, prey in that situation. Okay. Mercenary has wanted... Or, let's see. He's actually pretty close. Let's see how he approaches this rescue. He gets his cypher done. He's walking away from the chair. Is somebody else going to go for it? Um... What? Okay, now he's going... Because his geisha, for some reason, isn't pressuring him? She's just staying at the chair? Oh, because she wants to position for this trick. Okay. Well, this is like this is a trick that only really works on mid-tiers. I don't think any good survivors fall for this. Let's see. He didn't even care. He just straight did it. He's like, yeah, whatever. The, the window is probably fine. Uh, Toy Merchant not looking behind her. Yo, I am so mad that that's... Okay, never mind. It's fine. I'm so mad that these hits aren't hitting because I know like half the time I get end up getting hit by these things. Okay. Well, um... She got full... I don't know why she tried to hit there. There was no point in swinging there because you're already at full prez. Okay, you put Toy Merchant on the Doofus chair. Oh, no, you're going to chair on the Cypher. She already swapped the TP. Yeah, she's going to chair on the Cypher. Um, what is that Cypher at, actually? Oh, it's not even close. Wait, there's actually, there's actually really good pressure for the Geisha. Okay, Toy Merchant has, like, zero rebound potential, and this is an instant rescue. Let's see what her route's going to be. She's going to opt to route around side the rock, and she's going to instantly die here. The, to the Enchantress is not going to body block for some reason. Yeah, okay, so she's dead. Uh, unless the Enchantress harasses. I want to I see if the Enchantress can harass. Enchantress harass? She's not even going to try. Okay. Well, um... Yeah, the rebounds were kind of bad, but the initial kite was good. Next up, it's Hospital. We got Acro, Merc, Finn, Seer. Broke, 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 broke. Every team, every person here is meta. And Ripper is not very meta, so it's going to be really tough for him to win against a comp like this, especially a Finn, which kind of counters him pretty hard. Uh, so let's see. He had spawn selection. He immediately goes into hospital, but is not able to find the Seer who is around with him. Let's see. I'm just going to watch the Ripper until I know who's taking first kite. Hmm, maybe he has quenching effect. Actually, we can tell. He actually does not have quenching effect. Okay. Hmm, interesting. He's going to move on to the Finn. All right, let's see what Finn does here. Let's see, let's see. All right, Ripper predicts his routing. Yep, Finn has to double back, so he loses a ton of distance. He goes ball. He messes up his own ball, and the Ripper didn't swing. He didn't even... Hmm, this Ripper's patient. He didn't use his fog. Uh... Yeah, that's a hit. That's a hit. You can't drop a pallet in front of a Ripper like that. You just can't. That's a free hit for him. That's a free foggy. Okay, um, he makes this ball, I think. <laughs> oh my gosh, the bird! Alright. Well, now he has an insane amount of distance. Uh, but he hit the bird. And he has no more... He, oh no, he still has one ball. Never mind, he still has his ball. Okay. So the Ripper has Blink, too. His fog is ready. He's gotta be... He's looking out for Blink. He's looking... Yeah, he's scared of it. He's scared of it. Ripper, wait. Oh, Ripper, that was kind of a bad Blink, bro. Because now you, get, you just put set up Finn Ball here. Yup, yup, that's that's the Finn way. You set up ball to block Hunter and then go back into the ball to get the speed boost. Don't just block, but walk back into the ball and get the speed boost too. So do top players just not look behind them? Hmm. Interesting. Like looking behind you is so important, but maybe I've been doing it too much? Okay, well that's just that's just a ripper moment right there. That's just a certified ripper moment. I mean, um, 
That was a good kite, but it's hospital against a character that counters you and a Seer Owl was used. So of course it's gonna be three ciphers plus the rotation. So yeah, that's definitely three ciphers. Um, yeah, three cipher plus actually because of like, but two two resource or like three resources were used. Two fin balls, one Seer Owl, and the Ripper had to use his blink though. Um, okay, actually I should have been watching how Acro gets this rescue. So how do you rescue against Ripper? I literally don't know how to do this. Like if you just get fogged, you're just dead. He's bidding him to throw the fog. The fog hits him, but he hits him during the fog window. Okay, I guess it doesn't matter because he was so close anyways. He was so close to the freaking, uh, uh, to the chair that even if he gets fogged, you can still rescue. It's like the same thing with, um, I think Feast or Tentacle. If, you, if you're like on top of the chair and you get hit with a Feast or Tentacle, I'm like 90% sure you can still get the rescue off, just like if you insta-rescue. Um, I'm not entirely sure though. I think it's the same thing with Clown Dash. If Clown dashes you uh, and it doesn't Terror Shock you, you can rescue in the window between him swinging and him using, uh, like in him after hitting the rocket. Uh, it is possible. Okay, so he's tearing on the last Cypher here once again, applying as much Cypher pressure as possible, because whenever you turn the last Cypher, that's like the best thing that you can do. Uh, the pallet is set up. He goes for a foggy, misses. Okay. Acro is so greedy, bro. Oh my gosh. Drops a peeper. Getting ready for a bomb. He bombs. Does he get foggied? He does not because the rescue happens. Okay. That's double tied. Um, the Finn needs to try and escape and take the Ripper away. He doesn't have foggy. He has foggy, so he dies. Okay. Um, there's no harasser. He confuse emotes. He's saying I'm stuck. And he, he's dead. Okay. Well, that is a draw. Yep, that's a draw. Okay, next up, we've got a painter here. This is a limited skin, by the way. I don't really know um, how it's limited, but it is. So if you guys could let me know what skin that is, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, so the Opera Singer going up against uh, this team. Who's going to take the first kite? Prospector? Prospector. Okay, so he's hiding it out here. That's death. That's death. Nah, yes, he can't hide in there. That's death. Nerisu. Isn't that a pro player? Yo, he is so lucky. Oh my gosh. Okay, gonna transition to graveyard. Looking behind him. Pallet mind game now. He drops the pallet on the same side. I'm so confused. We're supposed to be watching, like, peak rank. Why are they making these, like, worker B level mistakes? Okay. Opso. I can't help but feel that that was luck. What the? What is this routing? He's not gonna force it. Oh, he gets the boost. Okay, dude, this processor is cutting because of luck. I'm not even joking. He's actually just getting. He's not looking behind him, and he's just getting lucky. Hmm. Unless it was all planned, I'm and I'm secretly just a dude. Maybe they're just on. Maybe they're just built different. You know? Okay, Painter, calm down. Maybe. Maybe. No, she's gonna TP. Nah, he's he's dead to blink here every time. Oh, he needed to vault to force out Blink. Hmm. Oh, I don't agree with that. I guess there was a shadow there too. But... Oh, Edgar... Let's see how much distance he gets from this. Okay, at least... Okay, I guess she did... Hmm. I would've got aggressive and gone for the Painter, but it looks like... Oh, because the Ford was there. This is actually not the best team comp versus an Opera Singer. Painter is okay versus Opera. He, he, his like chair time is like used a lot against her to stall, but forward prospector is pretty bad because you can't push cypher rush with forward. Oh dear, oh dear, that was bad. Okay, he drops a magnet. She messes up her dash. That's fine. Blink right here. Not gonna blink. There it is. There it is. And canceling of the attack recovery. Sheesh. And now she's gonna try and get the forward down with this? Oh my gosh, she's gonna try and get the forward down. Uh, unless he uses ball here, he's cooked. You force ball out and then you CP back. Yep, yep, checks out, checks out. Prospector is hiding, where is this exactly? Not a bad spot. Might have to steal this actually. Yeah. Oh my gosh. She's too fast, she didn't notice. Yo, that's actually a broken spot, I'm stealing this. This is a, this is a good dying spot. Not a bad spot by any means, especially against an opera singer. But then again, this th these are the type of things that I try to copy and it just doesn't work for me. And now he's hiding. Oh my gosh. So lucky. She got really aggressive going for that forward though, I must admit. And now she's chasing an acrobat and Shaq, which is like, 
I don't know why we'd ever do that. That's broken. He's a literally unchaseable character. Even for Opera Singer. Uh, this Opera Singer is actually messing up her dash quite a few times. I think she's done it like two or three times already. Which, uh, if you're playing Opera at top level, you like can't mess up your dash at all at this point. I mean, that's tournament level. This is ranks. So, okay, there's the painting. What's he? What? Why is he just standing there? Vault the pallet. She's going for you, bro. I'm so confused. Okay, he's dead here, right? All right there's nothing he can do. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of like upset watching this because like, why doesn't Santi mess up like this? What? <laughs> Honestly, um, I mean, I feel like I've learned something here, but I feel like, I don't know, dude. I, I feel like there's not a ton to learn here already. Hard to say. I mean, Acro, use slow bomb so she's slow. Hit, they healed up the Pro Sector. But she's on a different character now. Acrobat dies. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think there's much else to learn here. I mean, I guess where would Painter go here? He's gonna go through the Pro Sector to help him out. But she can now switch targets back to the Pro Sector. Uh... Okay, sheesh. This this is like frustrating. I need to, uh, maybe I shouldn't be watching Opera Singer matches. Cause the thing about like Santi is all the characters that he was playing against me were characters that I just couldn't pallet mind game against. He was playing Wax, Gamekeeper and freaking, uh, and freaking Anne against me where pallet mind, or pallet mind games just don't matter. And I just lost them every time. Huh. I feel like I need to be watching more of those hunters. I don't know, dude. Okay, here we go. We got another Anne game. Uh, Gravekeeper spawns pretty close to her. Uh, we got Seer in the middle. No, Seer's here. Acrobat mid. Postman here. She's going to be trying to chase the Gravekeeper first, which checks out. Um, uh, uh, wait, no, it doesn't. Why are you chasing the Gravekeeper first? What? Okay, so he immediately goes to Godkite. Drops the pallet without looking behind him. He knows it's an Ann, though. He sees it's an Ann, he drops the pallet. But now you don't have much to work with, buddy. He's gonna make his way to Gakai, but I guess this is tough because now I'm watching a character that just straight counters Ann. <laughs> and that's, like, not really easy to learn from. I need, like, a rock hider. I don't know. We'll see. He's just kind of... He's just spamming pallets. I mean, it's only working because he's Gravekeeper. He would have already taken a hit if he wasn't Grave. There's the Seer Owl. I don't know. Um, dang. He had to hop in the... Sh the Seer Owl is kind of wasted, honestly. Okay, that's both shovels gone. And then she warps right here, maybe? Warp right there. He's gonna... He can't vault that, so it's a free hit. Yep. Warp very good. That was, she basically just used that like a blink, and it worked out for her. Uh, uses the catch for the speed boost. I mean, this is like... This all checks out. I actually don't even know if he... No, he makes the window. Just barely, I think. Just barely. Yeah, just barely he makes the window. I, I can tell the distance. I don't, I, what was I doing wrong? Don't drop down. You're going to get drop down hit. Oh, dear. I don't know why he did that. Um. Yeah, I mean, at least force attack recovery. That's all I can say. All right. Uh, Where should he take... Oh, it's basement. That was a good kite, but it was only because he tanked four hits. I mean, that was good, but it wasted the Seer Owl, too. The Seer Owl and all the resources were gone. So, like, now that it's Basin, what becomes of this match? They can still Cypher Rush her, because the first kite lasted a long time, but only because it was Grave, and he, like, kind of counters Anne. And now Seer has nothing. He has a good flywheel here, but he might have broken Windows, too. A lot of Seers car carry full kite, but at least in tournament. I don't know if they do that in ranks. So she gets full Prez now, and she uh, sees the Postman, so he's going to jump back. Postman's going to be able to get that before half. Um, let's see. So just going to be able to quickly get it. Yep. Let's see how they try to get out here. They know Anne's up there. Okay. I guess they don't know that Anne's up there. Sheesh. Um, okay. Dude, I don't understand. I feel like any EU servers would have known that. Uh, and now Grave's saying don't rescue me. Okay. Well, this is a draw guaranteed. I mean, uh, I don't know, dude. I guess it was just because, like, she just ended up chasing the Gravekeeper who counters her, and then he just ate four hits and see her owl? Like, is that all it takes? I don't know, because the thing is, I was 1v1ing Santi. I didn't have, like, the support of team members or anything. But even then, my kites were so short. I could I could barely force out his blink or his warp. Ah, uh, it's tough. 
I, I was I was really hoping I would learn more from doing this, but unfortunately I don't think so. I think I'm gonna swap matches though. Oh what the heck? Wait. How? Acrobat eats the cat, but it doesn't matter because Anne's broken. Anne's so broken, dude. She's so fast. She's literally so fast, dude. Yeah, I think I'm gonna find a new match though. Okay, we have another Night Watch here. 25 stars, Hydra, Toy Merchant, Acro, Lawyer, Merc, Merc spawn mid, Acro there, Night Watch right there. Okay. Okay, th th these spawns make sense. These spawns make sense. So he's gonna. Where's the. Let's see the rotation real quick. Acrobat moving there. Lawyer rotating, Mercenary walking into the Night Watch. I don't think the Night Watch will chase him though. He might try to force out an elbow pad, then leave him. Let's see. Mm, nope, just gonna straight leave. He's gonna go for the Toy Merchant here. So Toy Merchant is now seeing that the Night Watch is here. She has two catapults set up and she's taking a lot of time. Oh, that's not the greatest catapult of all time, but it's fine because you're Toy Merchant. Um, all right. Let's see. So Night Watch is gonna have his wind back. He should have two wind stacks. Two wind stacks. Yep. He bought this. Then he uses his wind, and then that's a hit, right? This should be a hit right here. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. This this, this all checks out. Hmm. <coughs> Sorry, I'm coughing. My roommate is cooking something, but it like she burned plastic, so it's a little tough. Okay. Dude, I just, I need to see, uh, I need to see, like, survivors that, like, kite forever. I don't know. I need, like, an example of that, because I feel like, I feel like they just kind of straight line gamed. I don't know, dude. Okay, this is Nightwatch's worst map with a bunch of broken characters. All these characters Nightwatch hates chasing. So let's see. Lawyer did spawn mid, so he's going to be able to rotate. Let's see here. I want to, I like, have my own camera move for a bit. So that's the thing about Lawyer. I was, I was thinking about practicing with Lawyer against Santee. Okay, he's making it very unclear which way he wanted to go. That was smart. Because he knows the Lawyer's... And now he picked up on the Lawyer's trail. Is it really that easy? No, he left him. He's going to go for Finn? <coughs> what the heck? Okay. Nightwatch is going to go through the pallet. Finn's like, okay, I'm going to come back. He lost a lot of distance, but he doesn't have wind. Hmm... I feel like Santi would have had win there. I feel like the Nightwatch got impatient. Okay, Finn got scared, so he jumps, but he has an item to get away. Uh, he has to come back, break that pallet. Okay, actually, I want to like look at his camera movement now. Okay, I mean, this is good so far. This is an up down. Oh my gosh, this is a. Oh, he teleported for the chase. Okay, I mean, I guess that worked out for him. Sheesh. Uh, yeah, Finn was not prepared for that. Neither was I. Okay, Nightwatch. Okay. So what I'm noticing that this Nightwatch does is he like meets him on the other end so many times. And that's what, this is what Santi does a lot to, oh, okay, that was embarrassing. Um, okay, so I like, that was, I, I feel like I would have like had the exact same like planets as Finn, but I just die anyway. But like, that's the thing, like I play Nightwatch like this too. So why do I keep getting like 10,000 Cypher kited then as Nightwatch? All right, new team, Disciple, Merc, Mage, Prospector, Doc. Okay, spawns are a little weird. Isolation? Uh, yeah, what the heck? It's like diagonal, why? All right, so Anne's going straight for Graveyard. Sees the Prospector transitioning out. Prospector does counter Anne, but let's see here. She doesn't drop her catch from the start of the game. I don't know why she didn't do that. Okay, there's the cat drop. Norton is waiting for some reason. Okay, let's see. Let's take a look at his route here. Um, okay, well, if a uh, raw kiter would not be able to make it to this pallet, but Norton can. Okay, nice. Only only because he was able to do that because of Norton stuff. Now let's let's actually pay attention to what he's looking at here. He has a magnet on the end, so he's good on that front. Or no, no, he does not have a magnet on the end. Okay, she seals. That's the first hit. Uh, her warp is gonna be ready in four seconds. She does have insolence for some reason. Uh, I mean, I guess like you don't really just need trump card if you're bringing warp and you really don't. I know they do it in tournament because trump cards broke, but like you really don't need it. Throws a magnet so that she can't jump for free. If you are a rock cutter, you'd be dead guaranteed. Um, let's see. Yep, prospector beats Anne. Perfect example right there. It also doesn't help that Anne has a slow swing speed. Um, Red lighting, red lighting, red lighting. But he's not falling for it. Hmm. 
Here comes Cats. He should be cooked here. He oh my gosh, dude. Okay, no, with Cross, you don't make that. Yeah, okay. I mean, that was a good kite. That was a good kite. But I felt like it was only because of Pro Sector. Like, how are you supposed to kite this with raw kiting? Like, he wouldn't have even made that. He would have died in like 30 seconds. Hmm. Maybe Anne is just OP. <laughs> and it's, there's just no answer. Like, I know the game is designed in a way where the hunter is supposed to be able to get, like, an eventual down. But. I don't know, dude. There's gotta be, like, a way, right? I mean, the thing about Santee, I'm like, I'm using Santee as a reference. Obviously, Santee is a tournament player and has, like, 99% win rate. So he beats, like, 99% of NAU players. But it's more just, like, it's, like, being able to challenge Santee is, like, the best way I can improve because he's, like, the best opponent to fight. And, like, I'm trying to, like, uh, see ways of, like, what pro survivors do versus pro hunters. But it doesn't really just come down to, like, matchup, more matchup based than anything. And, like, where are you. I feel like it's just matchups and spawns that are, like, maybe they're a lot more important than I thought. I don't know. I, like, I know they're important, but, like, it feels like a lot of what we've been watching is literally strictly just matchups and spawns. All right, let's try something like this. We do have a character that I play here, Melly. And I play Anti, too. So hopefully one of those two gets chased, not the Far or the Merc. But yeah, Santi cooked me his Axe Boy too. I couldn't cut his Axe Boy for like longer than 30 seconds. And I was Gardener. Like, I couldn't do it. I, I, I just couldn't. Like, Santi's just too good at like every character. I, I just couldn't find a way. I wasn't Melee, of course, so I didn't get like a free flare thing, but even then. Hmm. Uh, I guess. Okay, that hit. That didn't hit her beat. No, it did. It did hit her beats. Okay. She drops the pallet. And then he's gonna swing at the bees, but Melly pulls them back? Uh, yeah, she did pull them back, she did. I think. I actually don't know if she did. Okay, he's really trying to get this soul. I can't see the souls in the, oh, he got the soul. Wait, she's dead. <sighs> this does not make for good reference. I need somebody who succeeds in kiting, not somebody who fails in kiting. That was a pretty bad kite, considering you counter him. Oh dear. Like here, we're gonna we're gonna rewatch one of my kites versus Santi here real quick. We were doing one v ones, so. Uh, I I spawn I spawn cabin, he spawns island, and I'm immediately rotating um, not to the pallet but over here, cause of like the like the position that I spawned in. So I think I don't drop the pallet. I thought I would. I, I didn't think the cat would hit me here. And so in a situation like this, I drop down. No, I don't drop down. The bee, the bees stop him, which Melly does counter an early presence. And unfortunately, because I'm terrified, he is able to break my bees. Um, so I get into graveyard and he uses cats. I try to dodge cats, but unfortunately they're literally impossible. And then it just comes down to, I just die because I couldn't dodge the cat. Okay. And then I think there was like a really weird play like right here where I try to go here. I think he tries to hit my bees through the wall. I don't think that's possible. He throws out cats and I dodge them, but he warps and I'm cooked. Never mind, I'm not cooked. Okay. I thought it was cooked there, but he warps back through and then he uses the cat. Like, why weren't any of the other ants that I was just watching do that? Nobody else did that. Only Santee does that. Like what? I'm not saying other ants don't do it. I'm just saying why don't why didn't the ones that I was just watching do it? They like the the references that I was trying to find didn't really work out for me, or what, what I was hoping. So this time I was playing psychologist and I had myself muted, um, because I was I was so sick and tired of just like instantly getting like most of my kites being 30 seconds, um. And the only reason this is like a long kite is because of it's like Ada. So I wanna I wanna go back and just see how long I actually kited here. Um because like the kite, like this is all just like pure rotation. The kite starts like I would say like the right here after he breaks his pallet, the kite starts. So 305. And I make my way to corner house, he uses the cat, and he gets so much distance that I have to just take a hit here because and like and see what I mean? This is what I'm talking about. I'm always one second away from a pallet. Every time I fight Santi, I'm always one second away, dude. Every time I was muted doing this because I was trying to focus so hard. And what was sad was he wasn't even trying that hard. It's like, that's the difference in his skill. He's only using like 10% of his power. I'm out here using 100% and still struggling. Um, 
But like, I was always like so close, so close to making like pallets and I just couldn't, I just couldn't make them in time. Um, so then he drops his cats here in case I drop down so he can see me. And then he's red lighting here. Like he uses like, this is what I mean. Like Santi's just using so many tricks. I just can never tell where he is. He's always like hiding himself from me. And he always doubles back. So and, like, he broke both pallets. So I'm put in like a really awkward situation. The other pallet I threw down, I think, which I should not have done because now I just died a warp here. Like I, I just died a warp. Um, and my stress is gone. I vault. And I was luckily able to get that because of broken windows. And then right here, like this is this is what I mean. This is like the one step ahead kind of thing. Cause I mind get I mind gaming it here. I mind gaming it here. And I'm completely only thinking about this cat, but he looks back at this cat, and the other cat gets me. Not the one that I have, but this other cat gets me, and I die because of it. And like that's what I mean. And the kite look at it. A minute. A minute as psychologist, dude? Like that's not long enough. It's not long enough, dude. Like if I was if I was Melly, if I was Melly. When did I get hit twice? Right here. I was dead here. That was only 40 seconds. That, hold on. I mean, obviously I would have, I would have items with Melly, but like the kite ends at 40 seconds. That's not good enough. And I wouldn't have even forced out Trey. I only got an extra 20 seconds because I was Ada and I barely got it because I got lucky here. I just happened to get lucky because like Santi was just slightly behind me and I had broken windows at the perfect time. And then I still died because Anne. Like, I know Anne's, like, really good in the meta, right? She's third best hunter in the game for a reason. But, like, the, like I see... I saw a professor on Santi's team the other day. We actually, we have to watch this professor match. Okay, so here, here's the team. This is, this is what I'm, like, really referencing here. Because when you watch Santi's streams, he 4Ks, like, so free. It's like he barely even tries. I know he, like... I know it's like he gets stressed out. He, he talked about how like stressed out it is like, and how hard it is to get 4Ks. But like he makes it look so easy because literally if you look at his, if you watch Santi's stream, he has a 99% win rate. He's like lost one time this ranks. Um, he literally like almost ends every game with like th two to three cyphers remaining. They don't even get him like to end game. Nobody can get Santi to end game on the NAU server. They just can't. And then he's up against the professor and a mercenary, both S1. This was like the only person, this professor that I've seen kite Santi. Everybody who goes up against Santi cannot kite him. They literally can't. He's too good at this game. The prof this professor right here, we're gonna watch him. He was the only one, the only one I've ever seen like kite Santi. Cause like these are the spawns. So you obviously don't chase mercy. So you go, it doesn't make sense for you to go for professor here. So I actually like kind of want to watch the rotation here first. Um, so let's see, I'm actually gonna mute you. Sorry, Santi, you're distracting. <laughs> um, so he goes straight for the professor and the professor is like literally walking towards him. And the professor, I guess he just, he just missed his cat. So why did he miss his cats? Like what? He never misses his cats versus me. Like he just happened to miss the cats versus prof. I don't know. And then because it's professor, he can't swing right away. So he's baiting it out. But if that was like, if I was a psychologist, I would have been getting hit there. Uh, so he pops his scale to freely drop the pallets to avoid getting that. And he, what I liked about the professor is you could tell it's us from professor. Cause what he immediately does is he knows that Anne is not, he doesn't say he's not gonna be able to catch up. So he immediately pops his scale to put it on cooldown. Uh, because the scale doesn't enter cooldown to uh, like do the second pop. And he realized he's not gonna be able to get it in a situation like this. So he pops it, so he puts it on the 40 second cooldown so he can get it back later. And I think anti, uh, Santi rather runs detention, confined uh, warp. So there's a confined space. But this is what I love, this is what I, like this right here is so admirable. He doubles back like right as the cat splits before the pallet. And I was like, that's so risky. Cause like now you just get jumped on and you get cooked. But he makes the pallet. Like, it's just those play-by-plays. I, I want to be able to do that, but I can't. I just can't beat Santi to do that. Like, he, this professor is already able to dodge two cats. And then he vaults in, which is super risky. And then walks... Like, it just feels like he just... Like, why does this professor... I think Santi was also saying that, like, uh, this professor had really good ping. So that's obviously part of it. Um, and, like, the professor faked the vault there, which I actually would have done as well if I was kiting. But, like, I would have done all the other things the professor's done. And he vaults again. That was actually kind of risky. Um... And look at the look at look at what he's doing! He literally walks right in front of Santi because he wants to dodge the cats more than anything else. Look, he just walk and it's like he's right there. But guess what? Never mind. He doesn't make the pallet. I was about to say he makes it to the pallet. Um, but like he's dodging the cat more than anything else. And then Santi, for some reason, doesn't do that jump trick, even though he has a jump. I don't know why. Because 
I guess his cats. No, he, like, because he, you know what he did to me? Remember how he looked at the cat behind him, then did a huge jump? Why didn't he do it here? Like, I'm just so confused. Why does he only do it versus me? <laughs> he still does it, I'm saying. So he warps here. And I think the professor has a scale ready. Um, he vaults that. And then, look at, like, he has the broken window, so he gets a ton of distance here. But, like, look at, he did, like, he even got catted, and he's still able to out-kite the cat with broken windows, like, perfectly. And he's still kite, like, he's still going. He drops down here, and obviously, hunters drop down slower than survivors. And he's still moving, and then guess what? He's, he's trying to bait out the scale. And then, look at, look at that! Look! Look at that cat dodge, dude! I guarantee you, 99% of people would just keep running here. But the professor instantly saw the animation and was like, nah, we go back. That's what I can't do. I can't do that. And I guess, like, maybe that's a very professor's, like, specific situation, because Santi's waiting um, to, for him to pop the scale, and he's not popping it because you can react to Anne. So, again, maybe this is a very professor-specific thing. Um, like, it very, very well could be. In fact, the more I see this, the more I think it is Professor situation specifically, especially since like the debuff that Professor gives to like swing speeds. It's, it's interesting to think about. And then I think Santi eventually like gets impatient. So he swings, baits out the scale, but it's still, it's like, he's still kiting. He's still, he's still kiting. Um, and then he, he's able to get the jump, but yeah, he does, he does finally get him down. But like, that was almost three ciphers. That, that was almost three cypher kite. And it forced Santi to use his trait. It forced Santi to do a whole lot of things. Um, he, he made a small mistake there, I think. But, like, this professor was, like, just so good. And I think they get, like, a pretty clean rescue. Okay, actually, how the heck did he get this? Um, what? Oh, Santi just let him get it. Okay. He spams threaten <laughs> for a TS. Okay, I want to say, I have the rebound, professor. Drops down, still gets catted. But now Anne has to drop down too. So like, did Santi just mess up there? Like, I'm pretty sure Santi makes that every time. I think he, that was just a mistake on Santi's part because that should have been a cat. I don't know. Like, it's just so weird because like Santi doesn't mess up when he fights me. I, don't know. I know it's the pressure of the match, obviously. Like, it's different when you're in the match. And obviously the professor did have very, very good ping. But it's like, the thing about like what I'm, that I have issue with Santi is like, um, most people are reactionary, like most hunters, I would say, on the NAU server. They react to what the survivor does and then they do something, right? They're reactionary chasers. I myself am also a reactionary chaser. Uh, but to be a good hunter, you have to like manipulate people into going into places where you don't want to be. Like what Santi will do a lot is if you run broken windows, he's going to make you waste your broken windows by putting you in like a really awkward spot. It's hard to explain, but he'll essentially trap you. It's right here. Now this is, a lot of it is probably just like my error, but he was playing Lucino and I drop my bees off here, which is a free pallet uh, drop and I pull back my bees. So I want to take a window vault here and then like go back to like a pallet, right? But he immediately decides to like switch it up and go this way. And then like, look at that. It's like he knows like, he's wasting my broken windows because I have broken windows here. And like the thing is I'm scared because if I use my broken windows by moving in tandem with me, I can't go the direction I wanted to. See how I wanted to come this way? Cause like most people would straight chase here, right? Most people would, but he breaks the pallet and walks around. And that, that's like, like, that's not like super big bang. But the thing is like Santi does this all the time. Like every time it's like, he just knows what my route is and cuts me off of it and forces me to reroute every single time while also wasting my broken windows. So what I should have done is I should have gone to the pallets over to the right, but I didn't think those were gonna be very strong. Cause like, I never win pallet mind games against Santi. Like he, he every every time I try to pallet mind game Santi, he always beat me. Every single, he, he's always like, oh, it's 50 50s, it's 50 50s. He beat me every time at a pallet mind game. He just like reads me like a book and I don't understand why I can't like get him back. I was only able to like predict him like a couple times. And then obviously because I lack broken windows, he instantly catches up. Like I had to go to those pallets over there, but then the broken windows just wouldn't have like got me the distance. And then I'm just, I pressed the wrong button there. But that's what I mean. Anyway, I do want to finish off this match because the professor still did a, like a pretty good kite to my knowledge. Um, Santi still ended up drawing this by the way. You like, you, you think of like how long this professor's kite has been. And look at that, he even, he even tried to scale uh, the drop down. Like this right here is a good move from both players. Cause Santi, I don't think he's trying to hit here. He's trying to bait the scale, which he does again. 
but the professor also just pops it just in case. Like he didn't get like a good scale at all this game. Except, look, look at that. Like that has to just be, I think it's only cause professor he can do that. It's only cause it has to just be a professor thing. Cause like he, he sees the animation of the cats coming out, instantly runs back and Santi doesn't have enough time. He, 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 he reacts, but the cats aren't, like, they, they just don't get him. And that's the weird thing is like, I swear dodging these cats only works for other people, bro. I literally know like they're coming out and I try to dodge them so freaking hard and I never do. Like the tiniest little edge of the circle gets me every time. But this professor did it like it was nothing, dude, multiple times. Obviously again, ping is a thing that helps you get a little extra speed, but it's not that major of a difference. It's like point, like point one, like a point one, if that, maybe point zero one. It, it, it does matter. But I've, obviously I have like 80, 90 ping, um, but this professor probably had like 20 or something, so. But you see this, he still has this scale. Like how is he able, his brain's working so fast. Like there's so many situations here to watch out for. First off, the drop down hit is terrifying. So you scale to do that. And then it's like, oh, here comes cats. But like, we, if in, if this was the, if this was my professor, I would keep running straight, because my mind is like, oh, I avoided the drop down hit, I'm safe. But no, the, they keep applying pressure. But the professor is like, nah, I'm running back. And then you still can't hit me because I have scale. And then obviously he brings back his cats because Anne's broken. Um, but like, you look at a situation like this, and you're like, how the heck does Santi win? Because the professor basically three cipher kited. And the, like he did more of a kite. And like, I, I think it's the only reason he actually, uh, he, he, he wins is because like they mess up. Like he actually, Santi was in a losing position this game, but he actually, like, I think they just messed up and that's why they lost. Um, so he tries to get like the, the thing, he's trying to get the double down the mercenary, but mercenary elbow pads into big boat. Like, I, I don't know why he did that actually. And then Santi is specifically just trying to like force him away. The elbow pad, he's able to elbow pad around the end and not get TS here. So the rescue happens successfully. And then I think it's like right here where the cypher is almost primed. Um, yeah, it's primed here. And then I think they just like pop it or something. Yeah, Professor goes down, but they're still in the cat range. So when they get up, they're instantly stunned. By the way, this is one of the stupidest mechanics of, in all of IDV. I absolutely hate that this is a thing. And that's why. And so he runs back to try to body block the mercenary with his scale, I think, but it hits the mercenary instead. And because mercenary is at half, Professor is right there and they lose. That's the only reason why they lost. <laughs> it was because the Papa Jack. And look, dude, that was crazy. The reaction time of that. Like, hold on. Let's see this. He he saw the warp. Like, look, 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 look. This is so good. If, if that would, because like the professor should already be on the other side of the pallet dropping it. But he waited, saw the warp, and then doubled back. Like, the patience from this professor was insane. This professor was actually just goaded. Um, obviously Anne's broken. And then look, look! Uh, the second, like he made it look, until Santi left, he made it look like he was going that way. And then knew that Santi would use his cats and doubles back in, like twice! And then vaults, and then gets away with it, but Anne's broken, so it doesn't matter. Oh yeah, I mean, that's a thing. I mean, yeah, Anne's still broken. Like, like, I'm sorry, Santi got cooked by this professor and still won just because his cats, like, he kind of got lucky. I can't lie. Like, he should have lost this. Like, looking at it from, like, an outside perspective, he should have lost. I mean, obviously, Santi's goaded. Don't get me wrong. But this this should have been a loss. It's because of that pop and, like, how lucky that the I mean, that's probably what he was planning for, so I can't entirely say that it was luck. But it's more like a... He was in a fortunate situation where that was even possible, right? Because, like... Had the had the mercenary use his, I mean, I guess he used up three elbow pads already. I, I think he already used up three elbow pads, but like I don't know, he took advantage of like a, a, a unfortunate situation. I guess I should say, like if the positioning was just ever so slightly different, that trick would not have worked. And despite having warp, there was still a pretty solid chance. I think that uh, like especially if the presser got the scale, even if the presser got the scale, Santa was getting double back, and then they'd scatter, and that would probably have been the loss. If the professor got that scale body block. It probably, it probably would have been a loss for Santi. Um, I can't say that guaranteed, of course. Anne's broken. He still had his warp. He still has trait. So it's not set in stone, but it would have been a lot harder for him to win, that's for sure. Okay, so this next kite here was the one that I was like, 
The one kite that I was like actually okay with, that I actually felt like, okay, I, I, I did what I had to do. So remember the last kite that I had where I dropped the pallet like in, in that corner house area? I follow like the same rhythm here. I follow like the exact same rhythm and I'm being very aware of the cats. What I'm doing right now, I don't have my screen obviously, but I'm looking behind me. I'm just looking out for the cats. So Santi decides to use cats here and obviously his hand's broken. So I completely move away from the cat, but that also just leads to, guess what? A free hit right here. And then what Santi does, which I thought was weird, is he like stands still. I'm not entirely sure for the reason of this. I, 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 Cause the thing is like, if I move right, I get dropped on hit. If I move left, I get dropped on hit. So I literally have to take a hit up here and he's like just kind of waiting for his cats all the while. Um, so he just opts to hit me and I decide to rush out this way. And I know he follows me here too. So I drop the pallet here. He uses his cats. Um, that, that pallet breaking is dummy fast. I hate Ann so much, dude. But because the pallet is still here, I do make this just barely. Um, and then from here, I try to make it to these pallets, right? This is like the next goal is make it to these pallets over here. Um, and I'm being very mindful of the cats, but then Santi's like, I don't want to play pallet mind games with you. I'm just going to use my cats. Another reason why I hate Ann. And the reason, okay, Santi says he messed up here. I actually think um, I got him here. Cause look, look at this. Most people are going to vault here, right? Look, look at me, look at me, look at me. I crouch and I fake the vault. And then I'm like, okay, well, if he's gonna walk towards me now, I can vault for free and get my, uh, my my speed boost. That was the one play that I got him with. That was it. And he says, oh, I messed up there. I'm sorry, Santi. I think that was just actually me doing a good play and not vaulting into you. Cause you were trying to predict me vaulting into you, but I didn't vault. I don't know. That's what I think anyways. That's, that's what I think happened in that situation. I don't last much longer, obviously, but I at least am able to like get over here and I, I'm able to like force him. I, at this point, I can only straight line game because I have to dodge the cats, but Anne's broken because she gets so much freaking distance. And then I just go down. And you know, it's funny, despite feeling like I did better this time, I just looked, it's the exact same time. The kite was the exact same length, 60, se 60 seconds exactly. Cause here's the thing, look what happens in the next match. Like he goes gamekeeper and I, I didn't know he was gonna go gamekeeper. I was like completely silent. I was just expecting Anne, so. This is, uh, this is, uh, this also has a, one of the stupidest hooks I've ever seen, by the way. Um, Santi was just laughing his butt off this entire time while I was just suffering. So I try to like, hopefully try to put the him, him, uh, him in between. And then uh, there's another thing. This is what I mean, this is what I mean. This is what I mean right here. Watch this, watch this. Watch specifically what Santi does. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna say it immediately, but look what he does here. What did he do? What did he do specifically? He cut me off from corner house, the place where I wanted to go, the strong area where I wanted to kite him. He cut me off from that by doing that specific hit. And that's the thing, it just, it's like second nature to him. Whereas other hunters, like if I was Nightwatch, I would not consider doing that, that specific type of hit. Or even Gamekeeper, I mean, that'd be a specific Gamekeeper thing because you slow down the survivor, but he walks, he hits me and then like walks to the pallet while he's hitting. So he cuts me off. Uh, from corner house because like if he was on the other side i could drop the pallet he'd be forced to break the pallet and then i can get to corner house for free right but he walks to the pallet so if i want to go to corner house there's no pallet in the way in between me and him that's what i'm talking about that's like that's why santi's on another level because he like cuts you off from the place you want to go and forces you to instantly come up with a new route and that is something that i really struggle with is when i have to come up with new routes psychologist has really helped me out when it comes to this uh, being able to come up with new kiting routes like on the spot because when I take an early hit as survivor I start panicking and I panic kite and I don't really know what I'm doing But psychologist having three guaranteed hits has really helped me be able to like stay calm and figure out what my route wants to be Especially when I need to reroute against hunters that cut up me off of the kiting areas that I want to go to um, And like psych has definitely helped with that but like my other characters I need to like get better at using their items with because like I'm a little rusty with my melee um this was stupid, by the way. He puts a trap down. So guess what? Uh, pallet in between me and him. <laughs> Spain's so cringe, bro. Like that's so dumb. That's so. So I just instant surrender because I, I I know he's just gonna do some st stupid hook trap shenanigans. I didn't even want to bother with that. And then here we go. Same thing. So I think this time I run into like the corner. Um, this one this one also made me upset because I, I think he hooks me right here. Cause Bane is stupid. So I dropped the pallet thinking that the hook won't be able to hit me from here. Guess what? It freaking does. And then, um, yeah. So I already used up my window speed boost. So my broken windows is already gone. And at this point I can't do anything. Like, look at how slow I am. He's already on top of me. He just like, dude, I don't understand. 
This is what I mean. He's already on top of me. It's been like, what's the point of attack recovery? He hits me and I, I get no distance from it. Like I barely have any distance. It doesn't make any sense. I feel like when I watch other players, they just have so much more distance. And like, I'm tr I'm struggling out here so hard and Sansi's just like laughing so hard. And I thought I was gonna walk through it because again, I can't mind game Santi. and then he just has hook ready. So he does that stupid trap hook, whatever. I just surrender because I don't want to bother with it while he's laughing. It's, it was really frustrating. <laughs> so when the final kite came, I decided to completely reroute. Um, and I think I decided to go try to get into two story here. So, uh, let's see. So he's checking over here and I was, okay, I was waiting in the corner over here. Yeah, I waited in the corner over here this time because I wanted to like make him use up his hook so I could take the vault. So I take the vault, the window vault there and I get as much speed as possible. He had a freaking trap on the other side that he thought he could get me with by the way, but I'm not that stupid. Um, and then I try to get into two story here which I do sort of, uh, I am sort of able to get up there. So, so I don't, that's the thing is like, keeping track of Bane's hook is really hard, especially when you don't have sights on him. Cause I didn't have sights on Sandy cause it's just rotation. So what I cannot do in this situation is I can't go to the window and vault it. I have to just drop down immediately. Cause I'm scared that he has hook. And even in this situation, I'm scared that he has hook. Cause like, I'm, I'm fine if he hooks me here. Cause then I can just go to graveyard, right? Um, so he keeps trying to do, I don't, he keeps trying to do that stupid trap trick. I don't know what he's trying to do. He's just, he's trying to just like, meme on me or something and then, then uh, i noticed that i don't make that pallet over there and what, what santi wants to do in this situation is he's just m1ing it because he wants to use hook to catch up because the thing about uh like a lot of hunters like wax artist and bane is if they get a basic attack and they still have their ability that you're basically getting double hit and you're dead it's really frustrating so you basically have to force them to use their abilities but in this situation i didn't know how i was supposed to right because with, with santi like i could maybe try and uh, drop these pallets here, but like I feel like he just always is able to win the pallet mind games and he'd just be able to hit me through the pallet and that's why I didn't do it. So I did I did drop one of them uh, and I just try to make it to this other one, right? Because I'm not just going to walk into him and give him a free hit at this point because he's already walking around to the other pallet. Um, so I, had, you, I used the tram to my advantage so he can't hook me um, or he can't hit me immediately. And I was kind of hoping oh, that would get me more distance, but it literally got me no distance. It just delayed the inevitable. And because he gets the basic hit, look what happens. Look what happens here. So he's able to go here and hook me. And I get hit again. Within like 10 seconds, I get double hit. So if I was regular character, I'd have been dead. It's just, it's ridiculous, dude. It's ridiculous how good he is. And look, I tried, there was like a freaking wall here. There's like an indent, I tried. I didn't think he'd be able to make it in time, but I tried so hard to like go through the indent and pray that it would hit the indent instead of me. But nope, it didn't. And then, uh, yeah, I just keep running. Cause if I was a regular character there, I'd be dead. I would be dead. And then at this point he blinks and I know that I don't make the pallet. Um, so I just, I just surrender. I know I had still had stress, so he shouldn't have hit me there even then, but like, what was I going to do? I was going to drop the pallet and he was just going to wait for my stress to run out and then he'd hook me and I would die. Like it, it, there's nothing I could do in this situation. Like there's, it's all open areas. It's free hook terrain. There's nothing I could do. And so I just kind of gave up. <laughs> so it was just, I was getting really frustrated that I just couldn't figure out. It's just, it, that's the thing is what I mean. Like, I'm just so close each time. Like, you know how close I was to that pallet? I was so close, but I was just like one second away. And that's what it feels like fighting Santi is he's just, you're always just not close enough. He's always just has the perfect gameplay to always be like one second ahead of you. Anyways, that's about all for today, everybody. Um, that's just kind of where I've been at, uh, at least after <laughs> trying to challenge Santi to a 1v1. It, it was just really hard to compete with tournament players. Right, the, di the difference between ranked players and tournament players, it's, it's completely different entirely. And I just, I was really hoping that after like achieving S1 Sight that I'd be just a little more consistent or like at least be able to hold my own at least a little bit. But like, I had like maybe one or two good kites versus Santi. The rest were just really bad. And trust me, there are some really, really bad kites in there. And it's just, it's tough. He's, he's just really good. But yeah, that's just kind of that's just kind of uh, where I'm at. What I wanted to chat about today. So yeah, I know it's kind of like disappointing, but it's more just like a I'm trying hard to improve, and uh, it's hard. 
that's all I can really say. Anyways, that's going to be it for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.